Yeah, I just got a call. Kevin Kimball and Steve Wolf are here. And uh, anyway, I uh, I can't remember if I met Steve a long time ago, but Kevin built the uh, the GBZ that I've got in the collection, and uh, Steve Wolf built the R2 that uh, Delmar Benjamin flew for eight years in air shows. So this ought to be pretty cool. I got two GB builders coming in at the same time and uh, Steve wanted to come down and basically look at the P-47 that we just pulled out of the container. He says he's building a 60% scale one, so that's interesting. We'll see where this goes. I can't remember if I met Steve or not before. What's happening, gang? Hey What's going on? The ever-present GoPro. Happy Friday. Yeah, happy Friday. Steve, I think I met you at Oshkosh or somewhere. Oh, we met at Oshkosh yeah, 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 at a couple yeah, different yeah, yeah. times. Good, 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 come on in. I did a little bit of the hammering on Delmar's GV, which he sold. Well, I know, that's, you know, I, I thought basically you built the whole thing, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he hammered on the wheel. Pad, so. That's right. Good, good, good. He built the rest of it. Yeah, so so Steve, you've been here before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How long ago? Oh man, was it, we first moved here, so it would have been in 2009 or 10. Or so what, okay, still, so still five years course. before we closed. Right. Yeah. So we were kind of morphing, and you probably watch some of my videos and stuff and yeah. see where where we're trying to head, which is trying to transcend the airplane deal. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so you know, we did we did events for a while and. Uh, you know, in the end, I just, I, I had to draw a line in the sand and say, look, you know, I can't try and morph because everybody's going to think I'm the same thing. So when I come back, I'm going to be totally different. So, so you've been through all the immersion environments and all right, that stuff. Right. So I understand you came here to look at a P-47. That you dug out of a container? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think my, uh, I, some of my, uh, some of my followers on YouTube don't appreciate my humor. I said, yeah, I forgot I had this. So, <laughs> right, right. like, oh, right, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. whatever. Yes, so come on. Let's go check that out first, and we'll go check out the Jeebies. But, oh, but uh, you know, hell, I forget what day of the week it is most of the time. Tell me, man. If I, did, if I didn't have a name tag on my uh, <laughs> thing, I wouldn't know who the hell I was. Right. <laughs> but I do remember all my airplanes. Right, right. So, like right now, everything's just basically crammed in here we do have the little museum light over there which is where the gb's are so we'll go over and see those after we look at the jug but uh so this is just basically cramming everything in and well you know kermit i'm a i'm a, a project person yeah and i'm retired from flight and i ran an aerobatic school and taught aerobatics at leesburg for many years oh i didn't know that yeah we stayed real busy like three hours a day or so uh -huh. you know doing checkouts and stuff but anyway i met a guy 94 year old back back when he was 94 he's 100 today oh my gosh and doing well i mean doing awesome. really good still lives at home drives jack hallett who flew hmm. p-38s and p-47s in world war ii and we've become best of friends hmm. when covid broke out and it looked like we're kind of locked down can't do right. anything and i didn't have a project i went i called jack one day and i said hey jack i said why don't we w w you need to live to be 102 or three and he goes why and he was 99 then and and I said, because I want to recreate Frigid Midget. That's what he named the people. I said, I and I said, he goes, well, you what? I said, yeah, I'm going to build a scaled down version, but I want to, I want to make it very accurate, put your paint job that you had on I'll it, all of drab and stuff. It's a D huh. model, one of the few that were still all of drab. I looked up, it was built in July 24th, 1944, was given okay. to the 8th Air Force. And then it went to the ninth, which he was. Oh, and, and good stuff. for you. And it also has a Disney dwarf on the cowl. Yeah. I'll be uh, darned. And so what, uh, what, what are you going to power it with? Well, I built my little biplane with the Werner radial, the nine cylinder, yeah. nine S Werner, and I've been having good luck with it, you know. Oh, I've good, got about good, 100 good. hours on it now. 
And so I'm trying to hit like 1,300 empty weight or less so it works well. Uh -huh. But I want it to be very, very accurate scale-wise. So shape. when people uh, yeah, look yeah, at yeah. it, shape-wise. Yeah. But, but I've, you know, I've been using... Are you going to shrink your head when you fly it? No. <laughs> you know what? What is beautiful, you'll probably see it, is it's 30 inches wide in the canopy, you know? Really? And I'm 20. Yeah. I, built, I built a scale canopy for it and it worked out perfect. Oh my god, well yeah. come on, well let's go check it out and Paul can, uh, I think he's down there working on it, where uh, he can give you a little bit of history of this one, it came out of Venezuela. Okay. And uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a freaking awesome project. Some of the P-47s the guys have built mm -hmm. recently are like, oh my god, if they saw this they'd do backflips. So there's a couple of there's at least one corroded spar cap that's got to replace, but we'll drill all the skins off at some point and, uh -huh. you know, do I'm all that. I hear you're building one up. I, uh, well, we're not working on it now. Right now, all we're doing is, God, the reason we, we pulled them out of the containers is because some of them were starting to have some leaks. And uh, what we ended up doing was... Containers are kind of going down a little bit. Yeah, they were, and we had some of them. So what we did, they were all stacked on top of each other. So what we did is we basically pulled them all down now we can get them out some of the right. floors were having some issues yeah. and so uh that's kind of where we're headed so you know, recently you had the, you know, issues with pallets over in the warehouses and, oh yeah yeah paul spent yeah. six months with yeah. termites uh, over there well, Kermit, i'm building at 60 percent which at 60 it's scale with the engine because you just uh, it, it's a big airplane it is big and, oh my god it's and big thing is the burner does not have a scavenge pump so the oil tank has to be mounted lower than the lowest cylinder. Which is perfect with the cow. Because there's no oh. scavenge. Well, this works beautiful because I, I can, you know, I don't need this air. I don't have the turbocharger yeah, and right, all that. Right. So this allows this area to, to, you know, to put the oil tank back down there and, and oil coolers and stuff back in these things. And, and you know. Awesome. See, I build stuff very scale when I yeah, do and I get carried away. Yeah, good for away, you. But, That's friggin' but, uh, awesome. Well, see, this is Paul here. Paul, Steve Wolf built the R2, the GBR2. Oh, cool. So I got two GB builders so here, GB yeah. and he's building a 60% yeah. P47. So oh, you I can full size. <laughs> fill, fill. Uh, you know, I got thinking Beast. about that. I thought, man, there's there's such a project and stuff, you know. And uh, yeah, send me. I know I got one picture, but send me some more pictures too, because okay. we'll yeah, include the, them in the video. The <laughs> So Paul's, but originally this thing showed up, the Venezuelans had painted over all this, and, uh, but fortunately uh, Paul discovered they painted over it with lacquer over enamel, so he just basically wiped it off with some yeah, lacquer yeah. thinner. Yeah. Yeah. See that, I just that's finished up the canopy oh, on it. That's and awesome. That was, and yeah. built the skirt and everything, it's all metal yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and then it's, oh, it's, yeah, it's yeah, anyway, it so it really looks like a, it does. Uh, Jeff at Airplane Plastics did a beautiful job on the bubble for me. I even got the antenna that goes up and, and that stuff. But I have to keep it light, so it's built a lot like an RV6 yeah. or four right. structurally, and I got the spars being Good built out for you. But anyway, and then, of course, there's that head-on view looks really, really awesome. close, you know. And I had to build, of course, every bulkhead and everything, make forms for it to stand. Unbelievable. And, and work them out. Wow. Well, yeah, help yourself. Look at uh, the size of this thing. Oh, my God, I know. Oh, yeah. there's the gun sight. See, yeah. Jack had, he said he had this, the small gun sight, not the, the big one. Like, I've got the... I've got the, the these installed. Uh -huh. I mean, I've got it opened a little to show, like yeah, know, this has got the turbo in yeah, it. Yeah, and I I built this, and I've got the deflector shield going here. <laughs> That's all up in there and everything. And and John Starr, who's one of the best painters in aircraft, and he does airbrush stuff. We're gonna paint it like a fifty or hundred hour mission or fifty uh, mission good, good, good. with with all the and then clear coat it somewhat of a satin, not high uh -huh. gloss. Yeah, yeah. A World War Two look. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's awesome. Oh, I appreciate this. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the wings are still in the container. You know, you, Paul uh -huh. can show you those. But basically, uh, I mean, look at this stand they built. It's I knew got, there had to be a step to get in the full yeah. size one. I mean, Jack it, couldn't remember that. They could actually pick it up with, uh, you know, with a crane 
Um, it's got a roll around stand. It came with a little tow bar that bolts onto the front. So we, we can't tow it across mm -hmm. the grass, but we can tow it down the road over. And Paul's just basically getting ready to put it over in the um, little museum light on display. That's great. And you know, this is monocoque from here back and then the engine mount and everything. So basically my firewall sitting here, I've got a tubular structure because I have a single row radial that sits out right. here. So I don't need this much depth in here, but see, these are all loosed on from here forward. So I'm getting ready. It's nice that I get here today because I'm getting ready to build all of this stuff, including the cowl and the cowl flaps. And so this, I really appreciate yeah, this. No, 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 no. Well, and, help, and help yourself. And or something. It's a strong airplane. You know, the wing weighs 1,800 pounds. Really? In the in the assembly deal for the military, they get 50 guys can put a wing on in the field. 50 guys around. These guys left in 36, and then the guys pound in those tapered, or uh, the wing pins are hollow with a, a tapered bolt through the middle. So when you torque it, oh, it yeah, spreads huh. it out and stuff. But yeah, this is this hmm. is really a treat to get to see it up close. Yeah, and, and here was the interesting thing. I've got my seam. I'm not building it in two halves. But this is where I ran my seam so it looks right. Right. I yeah. went one sheet all the way over down to here because this this is a top and bottom. You can take the top off. It's yep. literally People molded that, together, you know. Yeah, Paul was explaining, I didn't know that. You know, the whole they built the top half, they built the bottom half, and then load they everything them up. Together. Put yeah. them together. It was kinda of like a mosquito, but I think the mosquito went, you know, sideways like that. Yeah, can so I that, take a picture or two? Oh yeah, yeah. Everything. everything. That's kind of what we got so far, but it's a great project. Like I said, some of the things that guys have been rebuilding are, uh, you know, yeah. really, really sad. A lot of corrosion. The uh, a lot of the anchor nuts got messed up. So Paul's drilling all those out to put the canopy in. Help yourself. Okay. He's gonna put the seat in the canopy on that. We're gonna roll the, it over. The and, other thing that, that got me in. When I got the, I have the drawings to the, I'm, I'm starting on the tail now. Yeah. My spars are almost done. But the leading edge radius is just a 3 8. Look how sharp. The, oh, yeah, yeah. Huh. It, and the dorsal fin's the same thing. It's just a sharp edge. Is it, uh, I mean, not looking at it, but has it got some offset for torque? Not, as I understand it. No, it looks straight on. I think it's straight on, and the antenna sits a few yeah, inches off to the right. There's probably a socket for it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there is. It's sitting right up there. You're uh, you're the expert at this well, point, not me. I've been studying a lot, you know. Yeah, they're very helpful because there's again, you weren't accustomed. To the and and here's what's interesting is the elevator hinge line and the rudder line up with each other. So you know, so I had to build a split push rod that splits and comes back and and runs the two elevators, and then here's the rudder set up. And this really helps me to see it in person since yeah, I'm starting on the tail. Help yourself. The uh, the, uh, yeah, they had the, of course, the normally the, the front, front spar sits there, there right. so they had to build these brackets because we're not going to put the tail on. Uh, we've got just a kind of a, a narrow spot there we can put it over at the uh -huh. museum. What do you think, Mr. Steve? It's big. It's big, isn't it? You can see why I can go 60% yeah. and still fit in there. Because you see guys flying this, their whole shoulders are up. You know, Kermit, you talk about the canopy. My bubble, that bubble canopy that I did, it, it ends up the same as an S1S bubble oh, really? about the size. I'll be darned. It's 20 inches instead of, this is 30 between the rails. Uh -huh. Fuselage is, is 52 and some inches wide at the top end on this. Yeah. Really? It's 36 and a ah, half. There is a second floor in the basement. Yeah. Yeah, women's lingerie. I know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> and naked in Jamaica rum. Yeah, exactly. And what gets me is at the end of World War II, the P-47 was the fastest single engine fighter yeah. with 479 miles an hour at 30,000 feet. Wow. It was faster than a Mustang. Yeah, Mustang 434. And an interesting thing I, is, I don't know if you know, know John Shackelford, but he has a Sea Fury with a 3350 right on it. And he was recently in a Warbird flyby he's down in Texas. And he said, with a Sea Fury with a 3350, he says, I could catch the P-47 only in the climb. On downwind, we were pretty even. But as soon as we start diving in, these are known really? to have a bird. Oh, yeah. It just left him. Yeah. And he said. <laughs> That's because they weigh so much. <laughs> he said, well, we were turning in, what, 2,000 horsepower driven, 14 ton or 7 tons of airplane. Yeah, yeah. oh, my God. But he said, two of the flybys said that the P-40, I was indicating 485 miles an hour, and the P-47 just left me. And he said he must have been going at least 500. Oh, so yeah. he said, I'd catch him in the climb. And he said, the, our third pass, I cut on the inside of him, 
got ahead of him a little, and they were coming in for the flyby, and he went chugging by me. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, there's reports of this thing going over 600 miles an hour. Yeah. The war. Yeah. 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 I mean, and dives, yeah. Jack said, Jack said when he was flying combat, he never worried about the structural or anything oh, yeah. on the airplane or red line. Yeah. And they'd go water injection, and he said it would push you up. You'd go 450, indicated, coming in strafing. He said if you went water injection, full throttle gave you the other four or 500 horsepower and stuff. He said he would, uh, he, he says he saw, you know, like 530, 540 a couple times on the airspeed. Oh, my gosh. So, 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 it must, so the tail must come off back it, here, yeah, and then it splits right. here. So I went ahead and split. You're right. This tail cone's built as a separate section right. and a top and bottom. Split. All this, the Paul was just showing us how this splits right here and it's bolted in here. Yeah, it's bolted but together. Oh, I'll be darned. Freaking three sixteenths bolts. Of course, yeah. there's a lot of them. All of the three sixteenths. Yeah, so anyway, I mean, this thing is yeah. like a freaking primo. This thing's a time capsule. Yeah, this thing is freaking awesome. Anyway, so. Uh, when did you get this? God, I had to ask Paul a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it had to been 10 years ago at okay. least. I've done a lot of study. Yeah. Um, it's a D, so it's got the bubble top, you know, low back. But it truly is just like a time capsule. Yeah, you look in there and it's just untouched and it hasn't anyway, been I do, I do have the butchered or messed with or anything, there. which is really yeah, cool. Um, I've got them slightly <laughs> open. Yeah, the, the, I've, uh, I've I don't. I think got, other yeah, than just you know side, taking everything out of the inside, I'm mean, obviously we'd split it. Mm -hmm. doing a lot of um, but then you can get in there and clean everything. But there's really nothing other than maybe rolling out a few dents or something like that here the and there. The like I said, the skins are going to have to come off the wings and at least one spark cap is going to have to be replaced. But Amazing. what a great, all great here. project. All and you know, you know, Jack flew the first one, the flew his frigid midget. His first mission, he went through trees and literally tore, tore up the heel and it was a, he called it a log, but it was actually a stick. Huh. A part of a branch went between the cylinders and it tore the cowl up. <laughs> he came out, he thought he was dead. He was buzzing the officer quarters. It was his, he said they, we had 80 pilots, they brought three P-47s for us when they took the P-38s away and the 367th got P-47s. So they, they, he had his 50 minute checkout and the next flight was a combat flight. Huh. But when he first flew Frigid Midget, what he named it, he took off and he saw two guys walking across the bridge between the river and the runway. So he says, I'm going to put those guys in the river. So he came back around with the P-47, and he dove down on them, and he said, he said, they just dropped. They didn't. He said, I was watching them, and they just dropped. They didn't jump in the water. Yeah. They dropped down on their bellies. I came across there, looked up, and there's just a row of trees. And he actually has oh, pictures. We ha he actually has a picture of it going into the trees. And, and when afterwards, it was a cutout. And he came out the. He thought he was dead. He said, "I came out the other side." He said, "The P-38 would have went over the trees, the wing loading." He said, "The P-47, all it did was change angle of attack." Yeah. And he said, "The altitude didn't change, you know." So he plowed through the trees. Oh my He gosh. came out the other side. He said, "The whole front shaking." He looks out. The leading engines are beat up flat. The gun barrels yeah. are all bent, huh. and it kept flying. I'll be darned. Our and tax so, dollars at work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's oh in the. God. And I've read. It doesn't name Jack Hallett, but it says while a pilot was buzzed to officer quarters, struck trees, and had to have the wings replaced. And oh they put God. new wings. So when you see this airplane, the way we're doing it, it's olive drab fuselage, hmm. but it'll have silver wings because the wings were changed out. It had to get a new cowl, new oh prop. So you got a story behind it. So I, oh, I yeah, and the guy's forget. still alive. I mean, I just was talking to him last night. He's helping me work on it. Oh, he deburred almost all him. the holes in the, in the, all you the skins. Bring him down here. I, he wanted to come, but he just had back surgery. But he's, uh, he's doing good. Yeah, now. at some point. And you know how you know what he you know what he did to screw his. But he's a hundred and a half, hundred and a half. You know how he damaged his back three weeks ago. He was out doing snap rolls in a stairman. Oh my god! <laughs> and he hadn't oh flown a stairman since training in World War II. It's been seventy nine uh, years since he flew a stairman. But he was up yarding the thing around, and then they found a, he, his, his leg started hurting. Yeah. A few days later, he goes to the hospital, and he's got a ruptured disc. Yes. And, but oh my God! Stuff, so he's a little guy, but if you look at him, and, you know he's not a hundred years old. There's no way. Yeah. There's oh. absolutely yeah. No he's, way. He's, so he's, forgive me for asking, and I'm having these obscene visuals, but how did he come up with the name Frigid Midget? <laughs> Boy, you know he's made me swear to secrecy. With that. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, the camera's got to go off okay, now. 
but it has something to do, I think, with a song that has those words in it. Oh, okay. With, uh, <laughs> and, and, and stuff. That sounds like an easy excuse, an easy yeah. Way. Yeah. He, he yeah. said, he says, I wish I would have never told you guys that because you're, <laughs> you know, and uh, and here he is. This is like three weeks ago. I was out flying my Sea Ray, pulled up alongside, and there's Jack, 100 years old. Flying back, seat, did the flight, took off, oh, flew it, good was up him. doing aerobatics. Hey? Awesome. Yeah. And, wow. and, and he's the happiest. Cool. At the hospital, they he's said, you're the all. best patient, the guy, you, they've met him. He's just always in a good mood. And, uh, you know, there there he is standing with the stairman. But he's 100 years old, look at that face. Oh, he looks awesome. Yeah, and he did 104 missions. Wow, and, and good he, for him. He was over Normandy on D-Day mm -hmm. on his 11th mission in a P-38. And then he went through the Battle of the Bulge in the 38, and then in early 45, they ended up with the Frigid Midget, or the P-47, uh -huh. which came from the 8th Air Force, hmm. and until he hit the trees and stuff. And then he went <laughs> through trees with another P-47, too, but he got shot down from ground fire. He did a lot of, mostly fighter bomber. This is really the picture I want to show you, because this was taken a couple months ago when he was 100. There's Jack, but there's Jack leaning on the flap. Oh, that's too 70. cool. There's Frigid Midget. And if you see what the dwarf is oh, doing, yeah, 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 one of the swelling dwarfs. Yeah, he's the, yeah, 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 yeah. We got and, a oh, you, wild cat over here straight with the same. Okay, concept. so that was there's Jack, 76 years ago, like and there he is. Thing. Isn't it? Yeah. Of course, you know, he's a small he's guy. Five too. Foot six. He's five foot six. Five six. Okay. And stuff. I wish I could tell you the whole whole story, but you know I've had so much support on this project from people because people. Uh, you, if you ever met, I'll have to bring him down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he yeah, wanted yeah. to come today, yeah, yeah, yeah. but he just yeah. is, he's still in the hospital with the videos. He went two weeks without well, walking. We'll, we'll make sure we we'll get the, make yeah. sure we get the scene the in there. We'll find a way to get him up in the, because by then it'll be over at the museum light. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. You know, he, we put him in the stairman with a Bozen, we got a Bozen chair and you just hook it up huh. and he's an engine picker and just stuck him right in the stairman, you know. Oh my God, I had a guy here one time. That actually was a mechanic on the original Candy Clipper Duck on uh, Luzon, or what, what, what was the island where they had the Batan Death March? Batan. Oh yeah. Hello. Batan. Yeah, Batan. not Luzon. The Batan Death March. He came down here. He was in a wheelchair, and we I got a forklift, put him on a pallet. We picked him up on the wheelchair, got him in the duck, and I took him for a flight. Oh wow. my God, what a great story. Oh man. man. I gotta Would get uh, I gotta get Phil to get that out because sure. that. That was an awesome deal, and I also got a chance to fly the guy who actually did, I think, like four out of the five Candy Clipper flights. They were flying over the Japanese fleet to Luzon yeah. to get stuff, and what happened was they would bring supplies back, medicine, they had, uh, you know, some uh, uh, extra space on top, and they had nurses there that were working you know, on the on the uh, uh, med the medical aspect, and so they wow. throw a bunch of candy on top, you know, just to throw it on there. That's how I got the name Candy Clipper. Okay. Wow! That's and it was all at story. night too, really? all at night. Yeah, because the if, the yeah, Japanese if, fleet was out in the. You, yeah. you would really enjoy meeting him because he is a, not only a nice guy but humble. But his knowledge on stuff. It, we sat him in the P thirty eight when they had it over in New Smyrna. And that's his favorite airplane. He loved the P-38. But he sat in the P-38, and Jack literally closed his eyes, and he goes, "Here's with a turbocharger, this and that." Yeah. He reached and he touched everything in there with wow. his eyes closed. He hadn't been in one since World War II. And the guy says, "You think you could fly it?" And he says, "Pull the chocks," you know. <laughs> he was ready. He, he was currently up until the last the last couple of years. He's been flying an L-39, front seat, doing the whole flight, takeoff, wow. landing, aerobatics, awesome. and everything. So we just, he's like an incentive guy, you know. Yeah, and, good, good, good. He's really. definitely a carry it out front, you know, yeah. just to sure. try to keep up with him. Good. Yeah. Well, help, help so yourself anyway, taking a bunch of pictures or something, then we'll go over and check out the GBs. Look at the wings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah let's go, let's go look at those really quick. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm getting ready to do this. I'm starting on the vertical fin and the tail. A couple of Tempests, a two and a five. Uh, wow. Yeah, it does actually. <laughs> Charlie Knight was telling me that last night that the, the, they had one version of a P-47 that Republic built before, right at the end of the war, and it was super light. They took a lot of stuff out of it, but they hadn't had the turbocharger yet. But at 10,000, they got 505. Watch yourself here. Yeah, so see, this is part of the part of the problem, and we're oh, cutting yeah. out the bottom. But yeah. anyway, it just was corroding. Right Part of the information I've had a hard time is finding out how much washout they put in the wing. It definitely has. 
Oh, really? Yeah, definitely. Let's see the round, round bell there. You can see where the lacquer is over the enamel. But this is, uh, I think, the spar cap's, spar cap's gone. I don't know. Was it was laying on that probably on the ground? No, 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 no. The airplane, the airplane was probably on display at some point. Yeah, the pictures of the museum is in it. It's a dirt floor. Oh my God. Yeah. So moisture just. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, you know, if we have to replace both of them or whatever, we'll just pull everything off. Paint coming off. Yeah, that's just there. Oh, that's the lacquer. They're quickie paint job, yeah. But anyway, what a great freaking project. I didn't realize this thing had dive flaps. Oh, yeah, it's got, yeah. they had compressibility problems on P-47s and the later ones when it got to the 30 block. They put dive recovery flaps on it. Huh. Yeah. Like P38. Yeah. Oh, that helps. Yeah, I had some of these things that got into the dive and got, what I couldn't. I think I've got to build all this good stuff, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well darn it. Yeah, anytime you need to come down, if you want to fly down, just, you know, make it easy. Just pop oh, in. Okay. And yeah, I've got several airplanes that get in here really yeah, we, easy, we thought about it today, but the way the weather is, you know, yeah. Like, yeah, we'd, yeah. we'd get stuck here or, or something. So not that that's a bad place to get stuck. Chains. Good. She's, 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 still, yeah, she's just kind of walking on her own now. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Oh, man, that's a big drop right yeah, there. Is, yeah, yeah. So yeah I think we pulled container. the container wings out. We're going to take the forklift and pull this up and shore it up. Yeah. Because the problem we have with the fuselage, if we pull the fuselage out, it wanted to slide to the side. Oh, yeah. We don't want that to happen. You know, it's an electrical wing, but it's an even taper. But the rear spotter, which is right about in this area, the trying to drag it forward. Or is it the rear spotter straight? But they, they put so much wash out that when you look across the top, it's almost flat. Okay. I've got good drawings on all of that, you know. Just the feeling of being around it, you know. Huh. If you look inside the Air P-47, people don't realize that the gear is so big and long that when it retracts, it shortens yeah. before it goes into the wing. It has that rod on the yeah. back that brings yeah. it in. Okay, so something that's a big not, gear. Not quite as complex as the Bearcat double number thing. But no. But yeah. Yeah. Right. It, so just it shrinks it just yeah. enough. Yeah. You see there, Paul was pointing out, is a, a loading diagram. Yeah, it's still on the hatch oh, wow. on the other side. <laughs> And it's amazing that whole section of the top of the wing just opens yeah, up. It's open the bullet time. And opens it opens up. backwards into the yeah, wing. Really? Yeah. It goes from the <laughs> so lead to this open, way. They load it from the front. Yeah, from the front. front. Must be and then they're fastened. It'd be interesting to see what latches to enormous. make it, you know. Yeah. yeah. Not. Yeah, when when we get the wings out too, you want to look at both sides. We can pop those panels, yeah, yeah, you know, right. if you want. Well, I'd like oh, to yeah. come down sometime too, and when I can bring Jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People love to see this stuff when it's all out. And sure. Yeah, cool. uh, really, right now you, I'm starting on the tail. The yeah. So, no. so, oh, well, cool. we got we all, all the tail feathers over here. I appreciate this more than you know, Herman. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, I got to fly a Spitfire over in England, and that was that was really nice. Oh, cool. Uh, a single seat or a it was dual? A two seater. Oh, yeah. Was it? Uh, it had the low canopy. It was, it was Graces. Yeah, Graces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know how I got to do it? Is I met him and he goes. I met him at a pub, and during the Biggin Hill Air Show, and I'll be and I, we fell. You know, we, we were talking, and I said, "So what do you fly?" And he said, "You know, I fly a Spitfire." And I go, "God, that's such a beautiful yeah, airplane." He says, "What would you like to fly it?" Because he, when he found out I was Steve Wolf, he says, "Are you the Steve Wolf built the GB?" And I said, "Yeah." And he says, "I got a poster of that airplane in my I'll wall be with your signature." And then, but he had had a few pints, you know. And he says, "Well, you want to fly it?" So yeah, it went out for about 15 awesome. minutes. And, and then I was flying Collins B-17 for a little bit there before they crashed it, you know. Oh, my that God. That was really sad. Um, so there's there's aileron. Yeah, yeah. Uh, flaps. I don't know where the stabilizer is. Uh, well, that's but, what I but just But the canopy. <laughs> yeah, the, the front. You got armor plate. Yeah. Canopy. Well, I got that pretty seat. damn close. Hey Paul, where's the stabilizer? Oh yeah, okay. Man, that is a big wide canopy. Oh, there's, that, there's how they did it. So it could pull from the outside. Right now, I'm just moving mine from. But see, it's like 30 inches across between uh, the rails. Paul was telling me originally it was electric. 
It is electric. Yeah, they got a toggle switch on. Unbelievable. The side. That, that's perfect. <laughs> I hope they have an emergency release. <laughs> I thought my battery's dead. I'm not. I'm not getting out of this thing. <laughs> yeah, the. Stabilizers. Look at how for making thin the flaps or the ailerons, the airfoil is. Yeah, it's almost. It's it, it's a unique yeah. thing because the spars are fairly straight. You look across the wing, but yet it's an elliptical wing. It's almost like they just took the curve and extend. You know, they built yeah. it like this and down and yeah, put the just, aileron on it. Yeah. And so it ends up so thin. Made it made it practical on the man on that instead of fighting. To me, that fat airfoil, the airfoil they use, just doesn't look like it should be as fast as the airplane is. You know? Huh. What's it? What? What? What's that thing empty? Uh, I mean, a, a real big one. A real one was around twelve. I think. Yeah, I think it's like eleven and nine or something. Oh wow. my empty. God! Yeah. Yeah. The, the Mustang's like seven and a half thousand pounds. Oh, so this is almost double the weight. He said we used to go down to the end of the runway when I wasn't flying and watch the P forty sevens take off. And he said it never looked like they were going to get off the ground. You know, they just yeah. staggering out off the end. Yeah. And well, the you know, so, somebody once said, because the Republic was noted for making like really heavy airplanes, they said build a runway that went around the world and the Republic will build an airplane. <laughs> but let's use all of it. <laughs> just wanted to show you. Sam and Dave, well, let's go show the tail feather because he's uh, about to build one. This is also big. Oh, the, oh, yeah. the horizontal. Yeah. It's one piece. Really? Yeah. One piece, Dad? Yeah, it's one piece. It's not too. Yeah, that's huh. I can't believe I started picking up that armor plate. You could, that's safe. I told Jack he was work up to get it in the airplane. You know, since wow. he never flew the airplane over 8,000 feet because he was doing all low level bomb supporting yeah. the troops, he, uh, you know, I said, man, they could have taken all that turbocharger, all that system, and built a lightweight version as a fighter bomber because it was really designed to go at high altitude. Yeah. But once the Mustang came along, they quit using the P 47s as much at high altitude, but it was a better fighter bomber. Yeah. Jack says we wanted to get a P-51, and he he flew P-39, P-40, P-38, P-47, flew everything the Fighters Army Air Corps had except a P-51. We got him in the Collins one two years ago when he was 98. When he landed, I said, I said Jack, what do you think of the P-51? And he goes, he says, too damn heavy on the ailerons. He said it took both hands to roll it. <laughs> he said the P-47, I could roll that with one hand. Wow. And he said there was no problem. And I said, could you get in and out of the P-47? Back then, during the war, without help, they said, well, of course, I could hop right in and hop out. I said, it took two guys to get you in and out of the Mustang. I said, you don't think you lost some strength? And, you know? <laughs> and he said, well, maybe I did. So then Eric White, that was flying the B-24, Eric comes to me later and says, you know that friend of yours, Jack? You know what he said when we tried getting him out of the Mustang? We were trying to undo the belts. He, it was the two-seat, two, seat, two yeah. loose nuts one. And he says, he says, for God's sake, get me out of here. I'm a Mustang pilot now. He says, I might get lucky and get laid tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Jack. <laughs> <laughs> he finally got to fly a Mustang. So. Oh, my God. He is, he is, a of a he is. This is currently our little welding shop. Dave is... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does it look like it's in pretty decent shape? It's got, yeah, you have to take it all apart. It's, okay. you know, it's got like corrosion all through it. You mm -hmm. know, they didn't, priming was kind of just like a somewhat afterthought. Right. There's some light primer inside right. of it. A lot of the, all the skins are bare. It wasn't yeah. meant to be here. Yeah. You know, they it didn't play, they didn't build it. It's two years. Yeah. Yeah. That's what uh, I wanted. You have to jig it. This is what I wanted to see. But all the parts but are look good. At that. Yeah. yeah. Man, it's sharp, yeah. isn't it? It says on the I thought it was an eighth inch radius, but it says I looked at it again. It's a three eighths diameter. diameter. So three sixteenths radius. Yeah, three sixteenths radius. I'm, this is my next project hmm. too. So it's this, pretty thick. I got pictures of the. Did I send you the nose rib one? It's just no. the drawings. Here. I got all the drawings for. Yeah. Well, you know, Steve, I'm saying if you wanted to borrow it and drill it apart, you know, to get some dimensions, <laughs> bring it back all restored, all you know, I think we could, we could, <laughs> I think I could trust in building, uh, building it up. It comes back 60% done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is long wires, is that what those are for? That went out for ADF or something? Yeah, somebody yeah. Must, must have had that. This is uh, there to a mast on there or to the side of the fuselage. 
they did a really nice job taking it apart. I talk, I've been texting Nate Young, and I told him, I said, whoever you had taken it apart did a really nice job. He says, yeah, they were really careful when they took it apart. Oh, good yeah. for them. They didn't, didn't use the saws all. Yeah, there's there. no yeah. butcher work at all. Yeah. And this is somewhat, yeah, I mean, it's all when you look at the 19,400 drawings on Air Force, P47, you start getting kind of overwhelmed with them. Yeah. Yeah. But okay, so the cables are running an actuator here. Yeah, you see some surface corrosion right here. Kind of anyway, we'll replace all that stuff. For the rudder chain, if you look at the over, you can see the chain come up and it goes onto a little sprocket to run the rudder chain. And they have one seam right now that's part of there. How the hell, Paul pointed out, there's no, there's no blind rivets in this thing. No. How did they do how this? They this thing out. And there, I don't, I didn't understand because there's a nose rib there, there, there. I yeah. mean, there's. There, I think there's they, I think they shot this as a sub assembly. I do. They too. went in and they they shot it. all this, and then right. they came back here. With this, this is the right in here, and then That's they kind of threw a spar out, and then they reached in and bucked it all. And, and the thing that gets me is you can see how they flushed. Yeah. This and on the elevators, if you look, they did, they joggled. They have those reinforced. Yeah. Yeah. Leading edges, and then it's all joggled in and stuff. Yeah, that's great. You know, I've got to I'll I'll finish this in my lifetime, so I've got to be yeah. careful as a single builder to try to get it done in the next few years. But I tell you, when you see it, it's gonna it's yeah. gonna look pretty good, I think, as far as authentic. Not most of the scaled down ones. They got Mustangs that canopy's too big, and yeah. they, they get out of, like the Titan that everything's out of proportion oh, yeah. and, and stuff. Well, and I'm trying to keep probably, everything. Probably in did all this with the rears far out. Yeah. Yeah. It. yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's you know, my plan, and use a tungsten bucking bar. That makes it. Oh yeah, those things are great. Aren't they, they are. Well, you know what you need to do though is down there where the turbocharger would normally be. You need to put in like a giant, uh, like a mega speaker, so it sounds like a P forty seven when it goes yeah, by. Yeah. Well, I figure if the, if the burner doesn't fly it, I'll put a five forty like homie. <laughs> About three hundred horsepower. That'll get in the air. And like you said, have a have a good sound system, you know. There's holes in the first bar. Yeah. Line with the ribs. Yeah. Then you reach in and it's like yeah. a stabilizer on a banana. Well, I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and I and see how they did this, this for the. Oh, oh, you mean he's saying in here there's. there's people stuff. So, so you can actually reach it. Yeah. It has a bunch of holes. Long arm, skinny arm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can see the holes it's right there. Well, yeah, but you're not going to reach in there, but you might be able to. I don't know how they did that. Anyway. The noise inside of these factories, while they were shooting all this. I mean, they must have had a room with just hundreds of people shooting rivets. Just a constant roar. Well, when you think a B 24 has over a million rivets, or a B 17, and they're building one every 55 minutes or something, that, like you said, the racket in there. Yeah, the noise. When I look at the whole production during World War II, it's, it's too overwhelming. It's, it's yeah. like, how could they. How did they I read a deal in aircraft production that there was a point where North Americans could build 50 P6s a day. I mean, that's, uh, it's just one of my really cool ones. <laughs> Plug in uh, Grumman uh, Hellcat production, and there's a Grumman film color. Okay. 40 minutes on the design and the production of the airplane. It's fascinating. Hmm. Absolutely fascinating. <laughs> Well, this isn't going to be too bad. I can English wheel that out and roll the edge over and weld the leading edge seam there. Yeah. And then and then everything else can be done. I don't know about doing this the auto, uh, though. That'd be a lot of extra work. That's a separate piece right there. Yeah, yeah. right Take. there. We've got um, I can make roller. that. We've got a roll dies. That yeah, I do, too. I, I could do it this way. Yeah. Put a, a You're going to have to do it. Because now, now Because we talked about it. Now, yeah. now, oh, God, I know this is... You he know, works good. I mean, he, he yeah. runs with the bird. He, he, he did it. He comes huh. and works, and we feed him breakfast or lunch. The only thing is, is when he became went from deburring to dimpling the skins, he wanted a raise. So I said, okay, you get two cookies for dessert <laughs> instead of one. You know? Then I made him go back and do some burn. He said, I'll check with the union. I don't know if they're going to let me do this now. I've got huh. a different. He's funnier than heck for a I'll be darned. I'll well, bring you know, him down sometime. Yeah, he, yeah, 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 yeah. You'd like, everybody likes me. They said he's the best patient. He's in Waterman Hospital right now doing rehab from his back, back surgery. surgery. Huh. But he said it doesn't hurt. Well, I'm thinking if he's 5'6", that might be 60% of like a normal P47. <laughs> <laughs> I sit in it, it's so, it's like sitting in a, the bubble feels like you're sitting like in sitting a sitting in a GVZ. Yeah, that's pretty tight. That's pretty tight. No, I can't even get a GoPro on it in yeah, there. Right. 
This yeah. actually has pretty good room. It's surprising huh. in there. Cool. It was such a big airplane. I gotta go. I left my stuff. I, I wanted to get some measurements if possible. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I wanted yeah. to look in the fuselage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though I got the fuselage all finished riveted. I'm huh. Come over here real quick. I just want to show you something pretty cool. Okay. I don't think Kevin's even seen this. Now that's a spinner. That's off the Tempest 2, but that's not what we're coming to see. That was rebuilt by uh, Richard Grace over there. Yeah, Richard Grace is the guy who probably took up. He, yeah, he, he just did this. He oh. just did this. He's doing a Tempest 2, and he, he's been over uh, once or twice, and he came over to get some... Uh, mm -hmm measurements and so so we sent a couple of parts oh, wow. over there super nice for guy. him oh yeah 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 i knew his dad knew his yeah, mother knew his mother. mother but that th those are the canopies there, Tempest five they? parts check this out wow big wow yeah. big wow that was, wow it geez. was it was over kind of where the uh, in the other shop a few years ago oh oh so you have seen it and, uh, you had we got some lights there. coming up. Let's try it on. It is an amazing piece. Yeah, as soon as I've got the finances, this one's going on a front burner with sure. a lot of people. I've just been focused on trying to get fantasy a flight going and you know all this crazy stuff that's going on right now. But this thing, and it's a long, bizarre story, but Howard helped me get the airplane, I swear. Wow. Yeah, literally, literally. I saw this airplane in 1984, uh, when, or I think it was 84, when we had the Sunderland. We just brought the Sunderland over in 93, but anyway, one of the two years I had it at Oshkosh, this airplane showed up, and basically I, uh, you know, I made a mental note, you know, I, they looked at the Sunderland, I think, at some point, and I, they showed me through this, I made a mental note, man, one day I'd love to end up with this. There's only three of these in the world, this is the only civilian one the other two are jrs's and this is the only one leave it to howard that's flush riveted yeah, okay <laughs> and he and he yeah. bought it to basically set a round the world record that he ultimately did in the lockheed 14. Okay. so this originally this all had fuel tanks wow. in and stuff but basically i saw this thing completely forgot about it 12 years later i'm at the monroe institute doing exploration of consciousness and all this stuff never done any drugs in my life I had the most amazing experiences. I've got a 1,500 page book of my travels and other realities and where I was taken, what I was shown, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, in my third program, one of the exercises we were supposed to do, we've been briefed, was to go meet deceased people. Well, the first guy freaking pops up is Walt Disney, okay? So I talked with Walt for a while, thank him for giving me an industry to stand on his shoulders. And then he leaves, you know, and I'm like, uh, what, uh, who that's cool who's next freaking howard walks up nice. i had not thought about this airplane in 12 freaking years and right when we was leaving he taps me on the shoulder and he says kermit i know you're interested in my sikorsky s43 i'm going to help you get it four years later it was mine yeah oh my wow, god so that's how he helped you yeah okay. oh my god my yeah. world is he is off the chart bizarre and uh anyway but that's now, a you little have, glimpse you have a spare set of wings yeah yeah a brand new set of wings is that the vertical fin back there no, those are B-17. Those, oh, all this is all okay. B-17 stuff. Okay. Yeah. Was, yeah. He, A-26B. He had the A wings under, under construction and then... No, 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 yeah. He, well, what happened was they... The well, the, 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 the crash in Lake Mead, the U.S. Army Air Corps actually owned the airplane because they were taking all the airplanes for the war. Yeah. And then he was doing the, the spruce goose testing and he wanted to do some testing. And unbeknownst to him, the government had taken all this radio weight out of the back end well he takes off out of vegas everything's fine blah 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 goes to land it all of a sudden he goes down there it's freaking nose heavy as crap it water loops the wing goes down like what happens yeah. in a pby killed two people right away howard wasn't going to make it and the one guy that was still reasonably coherent got howard out of the hatch up in the front and so the air force the army air corps didn't want it so they, he got a bill of sale back and basically started rebuilding the airplane and uh, he ordered a brand new wing but the war effort kept going and going and going and finally said screw it so they rebuilt the wing and then eventually they delivered the wing so i got a brand new wing wow yeah. spare a wing for it <laughs> yeah. too so but it's it's a anyway nice but anyway, so. Airplane. And when did it last fly? I remember the, uh, the videos when you guys went out and took it apart. Yeah, Howard was the last guy to fly it and put it in the water probably in 1952 is what my understanding okay. is. 
Anyway, all sorts nice. of cool stuff. Wow. Now that is a spinner. Yeah. It is. Oh man, I didn't get to see this yet. Jack said that yeah, the R2800. Oh, what? Oh, see what? No, no, I was going to think, where's your little, little Russian guy? Oh, the, the Polly? Yeah. Polly's over, I think it's in the next Isn't hangar. This guy going to 60% yeah. scale of this? Yeah, I'm yeah Steve Wolf. Steve Wolf. <laughs> Steve Wolf, hey, I've always wanted to meet you. Oh. How are you? Well, nice yeah. to meet you too. Yeah, yeah, Eric. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Ken. Kevin. Eric. Ken does a lot of the early stuff where we build the Waldo Pepper J1 back there. Oh, and, great. Uh, does a lot of fabric, woodwork, and stuff, so. Oh, is this cool or what? They only built, I think, two with the radials. The, all the other ones had uh, inline engines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you and know, this, this airplane has, uh, like, did some kind of a record flight? Across yeah, it did the, across the Mediterranean yeah, or something. I don't yeah. know what it did, but it was, it had been stored in a castle forever. And all of a sudden, uh, I got a call from uh, my friend over in England that had done a bunch of work on some of my Brit airplanes and said, hey, this thing's for sale, blah, blah, blah. And he basically showed me some pictures. I bought it sight unseen. And the first time I ever saw the airplane was when it showed up at the container. Okay. And because we were kind of out of space everywhere is the reason why we, you know, had a lot of the containers sure. out there. And it was just time to kind of get them out and... You know, we've been airing them out and, sure. and things like that, but you know, this is a wood airplane. But this thing, this was Here's one of the high ones, and I there's a, nothing. Uh, is it, absolutely didn't get is any it one problem. Piece no, two piece. no, no, no. This oh, is oh, center section in the this center. is wood. Okay. okay, this is actually metal, but it has a wood covering over it. It looks okay. like it, but it's just a it's just, it's a, just a cover, okay. and it basically, I think, I don't know if it's part of the fuselage or it bolts to the the, the frame. Okay. okay. Interesting canopy shape. Yeah, but I mean, just, I mean, oh my God, what a classic period type deal. And, you know, and people have pointed out there's not a lot of original vintage, uh, you know, Italian airplanes flying, so right. pretty cool. One day, Fantasy of Flight's all about potential. There's potential right there. Pretty cool. No, 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 no. Okay, let's go look at some GBs. Come on, guys.